Teddy Roosevelt once said, a good shot must necessarily be a good man. Since the essence of good marksmanship is self-control, and self-control is the essential quality of a good man. Hello and welcome to The Everyday Marksman, the podcast where it is all about tactical skills for living a more adventurous life. Our website is everydaymarksman.co and there you're going to find links to all of our social networks, our community of awesome marksmen just like you, as well as our articles, our podcasts, and all that fun stuff. Welcome to episode 36. I am your host, Matt Robertson, former military officer turns tech sector corporate grunt, competitive shooter, a mediocre one, outdoors enthusiast, and your friend. Today, I am tackling a question that has been on my mind a lot lately, which is, why is good marksmanship important? Now, that seems like kind of a weird question to ask, but it has been on my mind lately, and I don't really know why I feel like I want to answer it, but I think it's a worthy discussion point. So this is a solo episode here where I'm just going to have a kind of off-the-cuff conversation with you about what's been on my mind. Because I think there is this assumption in the gun world, everybody who's into shooting already knows that marksmanship is important. So what's the point of even having this? But I really think that that's not true. I think there's a lot of people who are into guns in the same way people are into cars, but they don't really focus on becoming really excellent at shooting, just like a lot of people who own cars are, in fact, pretty terrible drivers. So in this episode, I want to focus on three Things, three reasons, three key points that I think lend themselves to why marksmanship is important and why I think everyday people just like you and I and everybody else should be learning and practicing it. Now, to give you the preview, number one is going to be all about confidence. Number two is going to be about actual usage in defense and capability. And number three is going to be about the characters that it builds, the characteristics that it builds with a person. So let's talk about number one, uh, that it actually builds up your confidence. <laughs> so so a great story about this one is that I, before I met my wife and you met her a couple of times, different episodes, uh, she had never really been shooting before. And over time, I taught her how to do long range stuff, how to, how to you know clean it, how to take care of it, how to have good aim. And I remember one day after finally coaching her out to the 300, 400, 500 yards on a silhouette range, she just had a a mindset shift. And it was a very cool thing for me to see for her to go from not knowing anything to saying, you know what, I bet I could hit that from here. That little subtle mind shift of I think I can to I bet I can was a powerful, powerful thing. And I think when you have so many people in the world today who don't understand marksmanship, don't understand shooting because they've never been exposed to it, then there's a good chance that that they're afraid of it. And the truth is that when you actually start practicing something, you start developing that skill, you start getting better at it, then you feel less afraid. You feel more capable on your own. You think, you know what? Maybe I can take care of this. Maybe if somebody was to kick in my door tonight, I would be able to protect myself while I was waiting on help to come. You begin thinking that, hey, you know what? It's probably a good idea that if I go out to the backwoods and camping and hiking, that I bring something along. I should bring I should bring a firearm as well as my, my bear spray or something similar. But you, you get confident that you can take care of yourself. And I think there's been a lot of experts on this podcast who've all said having that mindset that you can take care of yourself is extremely important. So that's number one. Now, number two is the actual, where is shooting useful? And this reminds me of a story. Um, I was living in Montana. I was stationed in Montana and I was at my local range. It was a sunny but chilly October day. And I was setting up at one of the benches under the cover 200 yard range. And I brought along my only AR at the time. If you've been reading my website at all for a while, or you know, uh, my very first AR was my recce rifle, my recon rifle. And it was a home built or home assembled one. And it was awesome. It was great. Now I've made a lot of iterations over time, but that's not the important part. What is important here is that as I was getting set up to shoot my shiny new AR-15, I look over and there's a couple other guys setting up a few lanes down the way. And as people at ranges tend to do, 
one of the guys walked over and started looking over my rifle, had a lot of questions about this and that, which honestly I don't don't remember. But what I do remember is the look of complete shock when I told him that I was considering using my AR for hunting deer or pronghorn, so long as I keep it inside 200 yards and wait for that nice, clean shot. And he looked at me and he said, that little 223 is worthless. You really need a 300 win mag at a minimum. And he glared at me for a bit, muttered something about nice looking rifle and wandered back to his station. And as it turns out, he brought along his own 300 win mag for sighting in. So clearly he was a FUD, the kind of guy who, who buys one box of ammo, and makes it last two years because he's going to fire two shots for sighting in. Uh, and then fire one shot for his tag, and that's his shooting for the year. And I know this because over the next hour or so, we started shooting my target in my area, his target over there. And while my target was certainly nothing to write home about, especially by today's standards for me, they were all at least somewhat clustered around the middle. On the other hand, his target had very few hits. I think he might have actually burned at least one or two boxes of ammo trying to get his scope zeroed, and almost nothing seemed to be connecting with the middle of the target. And it occurred to me that so many of the guys telling me that I need some heavy-hitting cartridge said so because they could barely keep shots on a deer-sized target at all. They needed that extra oomph to make up for their bad marksmanship. So this makes me think about why it's important that if you're actually going to be using your firearm, your weapon in a defensive or survival situation, I want to have that kind of assurance that when it counts, if it's a kill or don't eat kind of situation, I want to know the person behind the gun is going to be successful. And that adds to point number one. It's about building confidence. Now it gets me to point number three, which I think is honestly the most important one here. I opened this talk with a quote from Teddy Roosevelt. Now, interestingly, Jeff Cooper said something very similar. I have a suspicion Jeff Cooper may have ripped off Teddy Roosevelt here when he said, I have long had a tendency to tie marksmanship to morality. The essence of good marksmanship is self-control. And self-control is the essence of good citizenship. It is too easy to say that a good shot is automatically a good man, but it would be equally incorrect to ignore the connection. So I have two people who I like to reference a lot saying effectively the same thing, that the characteristics that make someone a good shooter, a good marksman, carry over to other parts of their lives. Being a good marksman is all about self-control. And it speaks to dedication to the craft and the willingness to go the extra mile to do the job right. It it applies even more so when we show incredible skill with a minimalist rifle that doesn't use anything, none of the whiz-bang gadgets beyond maybe a sling. Too many people, sometimes me included, try to skip the step of putting in the work and solve the problem with the application of more money. But that's not going to help. Becoming a good marksman requires commitment, and that commitment translates to other parts of life, such as your self-discipline and building good habits and and feedback and paying attention. I have another quote here from Daryl Davis, which I thought was relevant to what I'm talking about. And it is, The military doesn't teach rifle marksmanship. It teaches equipment familiarity. Despite what the officer corps thinks, learning to shoot a rifle is not like learning to drive a car. Instead, it is like learning to play the violin. The equipment familiarity learning curve comes up quick, but then the rifle marksmanship continues the curve as it rises slowly. By shooting one careful shot at a time, carefully inspecting the result. Hmm. To rephrase this one, it's very easy to learn the four basic rules of handling firearms. It's easy for me to show you how to do a sight picture and sight alignment, how to manipulate it and get the basics down. It is difficult to turn that into results. It is very difficult to turn that into consistent results at long distance. 
or speed. That takes time. And I've heard it said many times over and over again on this very podcast as I've interviewed experts like John Simpson and Russ Miller and Derek Bartlett and Amanda Banta, every one of them, every time I ask a question about what is the right gear or the right caliber, they all say the same thing. It doesn't matter. It only matters in so much as it's reliable. And beyond that, it is on you. It is on you to go put in that practice. Amanda Banta, as an example, talked about when she was training to go to the Olympics and she was committed to her goal. She had a calendar that every day she put a big X on the day that she followed through and accomplished her practice. And she did that day in, day out for years. Consistent practice. And that doesn't always mean actually going to the range. That could be as simple as five minutes of dry practice. Five minutes of dry practice is better than nothing. And as I close out this episode, I have one thought to share with you on this topic. If you've been a member of the community or on my email subscriber list, which you can find at everydaymarksman.co, big fat green subscribe button, I have been reading a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And I'm not going to summarize the whole book for you, but what I want to point out is one philosophical point that I think really resonated with me. And that is the idea of the 1% improvement. Huge gains through the margins. Now, what this means is too many of us focus on the big goal. I want to be in the Olympics. I want to win the match. I want to deadlift 500 pounds. We all focus on those goals. And the further away we are from them, the more work they're going to take and the more likely we're going to fall off track. How many times have you, like me, started on some kind of weight loss journey or a fitness goal and you stick to it for a while and you make some progress and then you get bored? You're like, wow, this goal is taking too long. Shooting's the same way. All habits are the same way. So the trick is that once you establish that goal and you know the path to get there, don't worry about the goal. Worry about showing up each and every day to make that 1% improvement. If you could commit to making yourself better by 1% each and every day, in one year, you will have improved more than 300%. At the same time, the math works in reverse. For every day you don't put in that time, for every day you don't follow the habit and you get 1% worse, you may not notice it. You may not notice it if you skip that workout today, if you skip that dry practice session but you will notice it after 100 days and your skill level drops from where it is now to 100% less. So think about that. Think about how you want to show up each and every day to follow through on your habits on that path to becoming a good marksman. Put in the practice. Build your positions. Work the trigger. Work the bolt. Work your manipulations. Work your sight picture. Work your breathing. Do all of those fundamentals and you don't even have to do them all at the same time time. Because at the end of the day, becoming a good marksman means you will have improved confidence. You will have a skill that is actually useful for the real world in an emergency, in hunting, or anything else. And you will have built a huge amount of discipline and self-confidence and self-control. Thank you for joining me on this one. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was a short one, but it's just been on my mind lately. Can you do me a favor? If you are enjoying my podcast, if you're enjoying this episode or any episodes before it, share it with a friend. Get the message out there of the Everyday Marksman. And while you're doing that, send them our website, everydaymarksman.co, and then check us out. That is it for this week. I will talk to you next time.